So I, I'm going to do our final um, session on um, giving. Uh, so we'll be doing a month talking about giving. Um, next month, we're going to be starting a series on the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so be, be praying about that. That'd be brilliant. Thank you. So, so far this month, we, we've, we've looked at part, the sort of, part of the process is that we have water coming in the building because the, the roof is finished. It's, it's been patched and, uh, and everything. We have it, so we need to replace the roof, but we um, also have an asbestos lagging in a, in a pipe up in the roof. So we manage that by sealing it off. But when we replace the roof, it's not possible to, <laughs> to do that and not deal with the asbestos as well. So it, it's become a bigger project. But it's about actually making this building fit for purpose. So we, we want this building to be, continue to be used for years to come as a, a church that is being a family on mission, which is what we are. So the, the first talk was on the fact God's generosity. God is generous. Um, the second talk was about everything that we have comes from God, and it's out of that that we give, which um, the French fry tax sort of... Uh, Illustrated this morning, didn't it? <laughs> Which got quite well. Then last week, uh, she did um, spoke about really uh, Jesus's focus on on finances, and particularly looked at tithes and gifts to the poor, to tithes offerings, gifts to the poor. Um, this week, we're going to look at giving out of a considered faith. So I'm going to look at the issue of a considered faith. Um, and since I looked at what, what does consider mean in, in a dictionary. And basically it means to think about something carefully and normally with a view to some sort of action afterwards. Okay, so that's a dictionary definition. Um, and we, I spoke about this verse before. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. So actually thinking about what we do is really important. Um, but, you know, I think one, one of the criticisms that people, you know, our ideas they have is that if you believe in Jesus, then you throw your mind away. Uh, and Or some people believe that, you know, if you're a Pentecostal, and you're moved by the Spirit, so you don't think about things, you just, just, just do things. But actually, it's really clear, as I've made out throughout the whole service, that, that thought going into all of what we do is important, because that's how God works. He, he doesn't do things randomly. Um, even the work of the Spirit isn't random. We don't always understand every time God moves us to do stuff, but it's not random. Um, in this booklet, there's a little section about, um, it's a section about calling it a faith journey. And in there, it talks about considering stuff and then making a decision based on some of those things. And I'm going to, I suppose, talk a little bit along those lines of expanding on that this morning. Um, and basically, the, my talk this morning is going to be based around one is considering what God has asked us to do or the need. So it's considering what God has asked us to do or the need that we're considering. Hey, think about the need. Think about what God has asked us to do. The second thing is about considering what we have and what we can give. Uh, so first of all, what God has said and the need. Two is about what we have and what we get uh, have. And the third thing to consider, God. <laughs> okay, so it's simple as that. The need, what we've been asked to do, ourselves, what we have, what we can give, God and his promises and what he can do. Okay, so that's, that's what it's, we're going, where we're going this morning. So 
The first thing is considering the need or the instruction. I'm not going to go into this into great detail. But remember, God said to build a tabernacle in the wilderness. We talked about that in, that, in week one. Um, and that was what was needed to be built. He, he gave plans. And so they had to look at the plans and think about it. This is what he wants to do. <laughs> this is the people we need. This is the materials we need to think about. God's asked us to build a tabernacle. Um, We've thought about things before. It's, it's not been unusual when there's been a dire circumstance around the world that we've could, thought, well, there's a need here that we can give to. And we think about it. Well, actually, they're in this situation. And so we consider what we want to give, and then we give it because there's a, a need. So we consider the need and give to that. Really, really interesting. If you read the New Testament stuff um, about giving, there's stuff in about it, there's stuff about equality. The giving is to do with equality, so that some people don't have everything and other people have nothing. So there is actually a call for us to, you know, particularly us being in a rich country. Can you say we're in a rich country? We are in a rich country. And if you look at your own personal circumstances, with a, with a house, a roof over your head, with uh, this, that and the other, it's a rich country. Um, and so there's always a challenge and a pull for us for that equality to come out. Anyway, it's just a, um, something to, I just added in there, really. Um, in, in, in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 and in Philippians, it talks about seeing the need to support someone in ministry. So like Paul needed, to, in order to, be able to f- fulfill his ministry at times, he received gifts from other churches to help him in his ministry so that he could survive and do, do his ministry. So um, there's that sort of thing, just considering, well, what does this person need? What, what, where are they? So you think about these things. And for us here at this moment in time where we do need to consider ourselves and our situation, it's this um, a building fit for purpose. And right now, it's, it's an amazing facility, but it's not fit. For purpose and you, you can even look at the some of the pictures on here and then you could go and just look up look at the wall there for instance that can't be repair, repaired until the roof is sorted out there were that's water coming in there and it's damaging the wall and stuff and and the blinds dropping so it's not closing properly that those are actual things you're not in danger by the way don't feel like you're in danger right now okay you're okay <laughs> but we is talking about a building fit for purpose. But we can't just talk about the need or what God's asked us to do. Because what happens, quite often what happens, and I've heard a, a, quite a few comments about this, we can get focused on the magnitude of the task and think, there's no way we're going to manage to do that. Anybody had any of those thoughts in your head? I bet some of you have, Yeah. We can't just focus on that. It's it's not scriptural just to focus on the need. Okay, you know, I'm no different from anybody else. Uh, If we just focus on this first part, we will get discouraged and we will give up. And we won't actually commit ourselves to the the project. and so it, this, is, this is quite a big thing, you know, and we, we, we have to bring those, those thoughts. I have to bring those thoughts, you know, like I, I have the needs sort of and the processes and stuff, all, you know, they're often before me. But we can't just think about that. We have to consider these other two things. And the second thing is considering what you have and are able to give. Um, and... Jesus said in Luke 14, 28, suppose one of you wants to build a tower, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? For if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying this person began to build and wasn't able to finish. So we have to approach things in a, in a considered way and to consider, Jesus said, well, if you haven't got enough, he was talking actually, the context of what he was saying was about following Jesus. Are you willing to pay the price 
to follow Jesus. That's what he was talking about in that context. But he did mention this about counting the cost. There was somebody who counted the cost and gave, and they looked at their own circumstances and they chose to give. And this is the one of the widow's might, Mark 12, 41. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she out of her poverty put in everything, all she had to live on. She considered her situation. I, I do not believe that she just randomly put that money in. She considered, she, so she was basically somebody who lived from day to day, trusting God for her provision. She had some money on that day that she wanted to give an offering. Uh, very likely it was a special day for people to put offerings in. And she considered what she had. Two small copper coins that might you know, be enough to give her a meal or part of a meal for that day. Did she know what she was giving? Absolutely, when you've got very little, you know exactly what everything is worth and the value of everything, don't you? You know exactly that. And she considered that and said, you know, today I'm going to go without my rice today because I want to bring an offering to God. And Jesus commended that thing. Whereas the other people, they just chucked it in and it didn't really mean as, as much to them. But she considered it. She didn't do it randomly. There's no way that she did that randomly. She thought about what she had and made a choice based on that. In, in what, 2 Corinthians 8, it goes, verse 11, Now finish the work so that your eager willingness to do it may be matched by your completion of it according to your means. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. How often do we think about what we don't have? So we consider uh, what we don't have, but actually we can consider what we do have. And it's out of what we do have that we are able to give. That is the Bible teaching all the way through. It's what we've said all, all the way through. And so we consider that. What do I have? I can give out of what I do have and not out of what I, you know I'd love to put this you know like a oh I'd love to put in 115,000 into the uh, the offering thing that's not the thinking God wants us to have he wants us to consider what we do have and then choosing to give out of what we do have um, and in the same way in 1 Corinthians 16 verse 1 it says now about the collection for the Lord's people do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of each week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money in keeping with your income. So you, you know your income, or you, you make sure you know your income, and then your, your gift is in keeping with your income. You know, so, so God's not expecting you, unless you are a multimillionaire, he's not expecting you to give a million pounds. It's just out of what's your income. We've all got income, actually, of one sort or the other. I'm sure, I'm just looking around, everyone has income of one sort or the other. And we can consider that. And then in, in keeping with that income, we give. I mean, that's, that's why, in actual fact, one of the things about tithing fits in with very much, because, you know, because whether you've got a lot coming in or a small coming in, it's still in keeping with the income um, so that when I come no collections will have to be made they were thinking about it it's actually sort of helping them to think about what they were going to do and so we can consider what we have and out of that what we can give we can consider that and that's what the, 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 in the brochure it talks about considering 
that and then making a choice based on what you can. Kay and I find it really helpful. We don't do it very often. Every couple of years or so, we do a budget. And we go through and we look through what we've, we've got coming in and what going out. And it's, real, it's a really interesting thing to do, to sit down and work out what's going on with your finances. Sometimes we could be frightened of doing that. I think fear is one reason for not doing a budget. Not quite sure, not, not, quite, not knowing quite how to do it is another thing. But there are a bit, and so and if you ever need help, um, you know, we can make sure you get help to, to do it. But it's really, really good because we went through, Kay and I went through our budget just recently, okay? Um, and it, probably in the light of this, because we were sort of having to decide, well, what, what are we going to give into to this? Or what are we, what have we got? What can we give? What would God like us to give? So we've, we've been going through that process ourselves. We went through a budget to help us look at that. And we discovered that we've been paying £13.99 a month for the last three years for something that we don't use. I think it was something that, well, you don't really need to know. Um, but just doing a budget, we've just saved ourselves 13.99 a month because we've just gone through and checked the different things that were going on. So, so that's good. So we've got £13 extra a month now, disposable income. You think, oh, <laughs> anyone want to see me? <laughs> no. I'll, buy, I'll buy you some um, French fries. Although, I went, I went to the drive through this morning. <laughs> I thought, I'll get them quickly. And I discovered something I didn't know, that they don't serve French fries till 11 o'clock. But knowing, actually making some of those savings helps. But also, when you sort of get through it, it helps you to, to see your capacity to give. So we, you know, sometimes your income changes or situations change and you say, do you know, I've got a greater capacity to give. I've got a lesser capacity to give. How do you, how do you find that out? By thinking about it and actually looking through it and working it out. And... And there's one other thing that this budgeting can help you do. So you might look at it, for instance, and say, do you know, for a season, I, I, I don't actually go out to, to coffee shops unless it's evangelism or pastoral stuff very much. But Kay and I do occasionally go out, you know, whether it's once or twice a month, some of it, you know. But if, if, it's very easy like, to spend £20 a month going out for coffee. Easy to spend that or more. By budgeting, you can actually look and say, do you know what, for the next season, I'm going to cut that out, like that lady cut out her meal, because I want to, to, uh, to give to this, you know. And, and it's actually thinking about it can help us change our habits or just make a sacrifice at times so that we can give to a, a, a course. And thinking about it is a really good way of doing it. And then, it, so there, there's a lot of benefits to budgeting and thinking about stuff. Saving money, seeing our capacity to give, choosing to make a sacrifice within that, what we can do. So, so all of that. If you're married to a believer, you can work it out. You should, so you normally should work it out together, but everyone works out their own finances, however they, you know, however they choose to do it. Um, but um, you can work it out together. I mean, it's something that Kay and I, I do, and it's, it's quite a precious moment because we have to sort of talk about it, and it's, it's really, really helped us, you know, to consider it. And, and when we're thinking about the mount, it relieves some of the pressure talking about it as well, working it through, because I know that we can be fearful of looking at our finances. It's, it's for a lot of people. And that's one of the things that um, Citizens Advice Bureau or, or, or Christians Against Poverty, CAP, do is help people just look at their finances and, and see there's always a way forward. Anyway. 
that thinking about it and looking at it, we could actually say planned giving. Do you know what? If I, for the next two years, chose to um, do, you know, just sort of reduce something or to give in such a way, if I chose to give £50 a month, okay, this is just a, an illustration, if I chose to give £50 a month for the next two years, I could buy a solar panel. <laughs> yeah, something like that. And it, and it's, it's, that's not unrealistic. You know, sometimes we're looking at our budget and think, do you know, I have got money that I could put in there. Or, I could buy, uh, or £25, I could buy half a solar panel <laughs> in two years. And it's a commitment. And on these um, forms, they do it, there's a form where you can make a pledge, say, over this next period of time, I'd like to give this amount of money or, or whatever. So that actually thinking about it, wouldn't you love to put a solar panel on top of the roof? Wouldn't you love to have a roof to put the solar panel on top of? Yeah. So it's thinking about it. What do we have? And I want to give you an example. Jesus was in a situation and he commanded the disciples to find out what they had. Remember the feeding of the 5,000? Jesus said in Mark 6, verse 38, how many loaves do you have? He asked. Go and see. They said, we've not got enough bread. There's all these people. We've got the years, need a year's wages to get all this uh, food for all these people. And Jesus says, well, find out how many loaves you've got. And they, when they found out, they said, well, we've got five loaves and we've got two fish. And... Jesus asked them to look at what they had got. So is, is this a fair point that I'm making here? <laughs> it is, isn't it? And, but isn't that... Like with the need or what God's called us to do, we, weren't, we, we can't just focus on that. We can't just consider that. We can't just consider what we've got. Because if we just consider what we've got... It might cause us to be despondent as well at times. It might, you might find you're really blessed. You're like, wow, did I, have I got that much? Am I getting that much in? Wow, fantastic. But it might, but remember, they considered what they got with those loaves and fishes. And that brings me on to the third point. You've got to consider God as well, what God is able to do with the, what we're able to give, what we've got to give. What's God able to do with it? So we have to consider God. And that is the other dimension to this whole consider, considered giving, considered faith. It's considering God and his promises. Abraham was the father, is considered a father of faith. You know, he's talked about, really um, mentioned as someone who's a real example of faith. And the biggest example of that, one was believing for um, the family, you know, and the multitudes. But it, and that was the core thing of it. But when God asked him to sacrifice his son, in Hebrews 11, 17, by faith, Abraham, when God tested him, offered Isaac as a sacrifice. He who had embraced the promises, he'd embraced God's promises, and that's important for us here, I think, to embrace God's promises over us and for our church and, and our lives and for the church. He was about to sacrifice his one and only son, even though God had said to him, it is through Isaac your offering will be reckoned. Abraham reasoned, he considered, and he thought about it, that God could even raise the dead. And so in a manner of speaking, he did receive Isaac back from the dead, believing so considering that God is able to do way more than we can even think or imagine according to his power that is at work within us. And that if he did not withhold his only son from us, how, you know, he's not going to withhold anything from us. And we consider God. In Philippians 4, verse 18, it says, I've received full payment and have more than enough. I'm amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus the gifts you sent. They are a fragrant offering, 
an acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And when we consider God, we don't only consider what he can do, we consider that we're giving him an offering that is to him. So we're not just considering the need and what he's called us to do. We're not just considering what we have and what we can give. We're considering God who's able to do immeasurably more than we think or imagine. And we're considering God who is worthy of a fragrant offering. One given with a, a generous spirit and with a heart just wanting to honor God and his purposes. And, and that is, this sort of balanced approach to giving is, so, is, is absolutely convinced that this is how we should approach stuff. And just like they considered how many loaves and fishes they got, Jesus said, just give them to me. <laughs> Let me deal with it. And consider him. And then it goes, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. And he's saying, as you gave sacrificially, as, a, as an offering to God, I will make sure that you are fully recompensed, that he will meet all our needs according to his riches in glory. Often our focus on what we don't have or what we might not have stops us focusing on God who can provide all our needs all our needs according to his riches in glory. So we have to have the focus on all these three things to, and to consider all these three, three things and that then brings us to the point where we can make our, our choice, our considered choice. And in 2 Corinthians 9, it says, verse 6, it says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. And that is this process helps you to decide in your heart what you want to give and how you want to give it. Um, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. That is the heart of it, all of this. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor and their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. It's all about him. And so we have to consider him and what he can do and how he will provide for us um, Because of the service by which you approved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for, for you, their hearts will go out to you because of the surpassing grace God has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. It all comes down to that. When we consider our offering at In the context of all that I've shared, the, David said something when he was um, wanting to build an altar to God. He said in 2 Samuel 24, I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. And so in terms even of our finances, it is interesting when Kay and I were talking about what, looked at our budget, talked about what we could give, what we what we felt we should give, and we had, we had a different figure in, in mind to, to each other. And so then we had to talk about it and to pray about it and just to sit on it for a bit and just really consider. And part of the, the thinking was that we, we 
did have um, some money that, that we planned on doing some stuff with actually on, on our house. And um, one sum wouldn't impact that. Another sum would impact that. And in the end, we came to the, the larger sum, and it felt so much better. You know, in, in the Bible, it talks about um, building your own house, and that the Lord's house is ruined. Is it, is it in Malachi? Is it um, there on one of those minor prophets? Um, and it just sat with us right that we weren't doing the easy option. But we had to come to that considered choice, and that was for us. So some of you, you might um, work out something in your, in your budget and then say, actually, God doesn't want us to give that. He wants us to give less. <laughs> or he doesn't want us to sort of give more than that. That's the, that's the right sum for you. So I'm sharing this because God wants us, this thing, to be a considered act of faith we consider the need which is great but God wants there to be a church here that's being a family on mission and affecting this area that's one thing the second thing considering our own situation don't consider that what you have is too small don't make judge your giving based on the extent of the need of the project or your lack base it on what you do have but don't just focus on that God can take what you have, and if you give it with the right heart, and, and you know, it could be a sacrificial gift. It, it probably should be a sacrificial gift to some extent. Um, what God can do with it as you offer it up as a fragrant offering to God.